Your love is all I need. Oh, yeah. Your love is all I crave. Your love is so wonderful to me. Your love lifts me high out of the grave. Your perfect name. Jesus is so wonderful to me. Oh, your perfect name, Jesus, is so special to me. My wonderful King, how much you mean to me. You're perfect in all your ways. I'm staying right here, no worries. Like a child, I'm gonna rest in you. Like a babe, all my days. Ooh, like a babe, like a babe, all my days. Praise the Lord. I just want to say, be encouraged what you're doing. The Lord is so sweet. You know, sometimes with my YouTube channel, it's like, I do Christian followers. But the Lord's like, press when you don't see it. People want, sometimes you want the fruit. You want the fruit of somebody else's obedience to harvest, but you don't want to go through seed time. And I thank the Lord for um, Heather Lindsay for using her walking by faith, you know, to encourage me. And just, you know, I put the videos on the last night about 12 or 1 o'clock. I heard my dad praying for somebody who called the prayer line, a brother in Christ. He was from Arizona. Praise the Lord. My dad was sleepy, worked hard, but got up and prayed. I'm like, wow, the fruit of my obedience. And he received, I could hear him talking about salvation and, and the Holy Spirit and a prayer of like either being baptized in the Holy Spirit or receiving Christ or renewing his life. That's, that's renewing his life in Christ. That's mighty. That's a piece of fruit right there. You know, I may not have all the fruit salad right now, but he's giving me bits and pieces, and it's awesome. So press on. God is so awesome. I get to hear my daddy sing praises to the Lord. It's so beautiful outside, you know, at a time when we had no relationship, when he was in bondage to sin. If I'm, I, and I got to see this being at home with my parents. It's so beautiful. And I just, um, we need to serve others. Like, our obedience is not about us. When we put, once we put the focus on ourselves, we, we, we miss it. And it's not about us. And, and there's so many little ones who are broken. So many little ones who are called to. So many little ones we need to carry to the bosom of the Father who are crippled, who are lame, spiritually crippled and spiritually lame. Even maybe physically that can't, that need help. That God has assigned you to a specific person for you to help them. For you to bring them to the love of the Father. And it's, it's heartbreaking when you see in... Um, for the pull of Bethesda, like people were so worried about getting their healing, worried about getting their deliverance, that they didn't help this man get to the pool. They just walked over over him. How selfish can we be, even the body of Christ? Like, how selfish can I be? I want my blessing. I want my time. I want this. So whatever it takes, I don't. I'm not worried about the little ones. That's not the heart of Christ. Christ bypassed everyone else who was there and went to that man who's been there for 38 years, trying to get into the pool. And the Lord brought the pull to him because he was the healing in it. See, God, the, I'm learning so much about Christ and his heart in this season, how compassionate he is, how, well, I'm gone, you treat me bad. It's not like that. Christ loved you when you were a sinner. When we get sinners, he died for us, not when we were good enough to die. We're never good. We're not good enough now. He made us worthy. So we really need to renew our mind and get in this word. And, like, it's not what you think. It's not what you think. There should be no divorce for Christians. Like, love endures. I tell my mom endured. Love endures. I'm going to read this. Praise God. Love endures all things. We need to get back. We need to get back. <laughs> I'm going to read this. Chapter 5, the pool of Bethesda. And ch number 5, chapter 5. 5 is the number of grace. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches, five grace and mercy. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, a blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. And even before Jesus came, how many people could have helped those people, you know? They couldn't get in themselves. They just were too selfish. 
For angel went down in a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. The little ones. And there's a certain man there. See a certain man. Jesus sees your pain. He sees a certain somebody. He sees you when everyone overlooks you. He sees you. He's waiting on the perfect timing to come and save you. Which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will you be made whole? The potent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the tr water is troubled to put me into the pool. He didn't have a friend. He didn't have a family member. They forgot about him 38 years. You're not whatever. You're nobody. You're nothing. You're trash. You're, we spit on you. We don't care about you. You're invisible. But God, when, when people reject us, even Christians, you think, uh, true Christians should reject people. We got to get back to the heart of Jesus. You're not forgotten. Jesus is coming at the perfect time. The blessing is going to be so perfect, it's going to be written forever. He had to wait 38 years, and now I'm reading about him in 2017, you know? So you may think God's forgetting about you. He's punishing you, but he's waiting to get the greater glory. But while I'm coming, other steps down before me. So while he's coming, someone steps down before him. It's very, it's heartbreaking. Lord, expose in our hearts where we step down before someone else who needs help. How we're so selfish and wanting about me, me, me. Instead of us. Give us a pure heart of you, Lord God. Of sacrifice, of self-sacrifice, of laying down our life for one for a brother. Laying down our life to the one you called us to, Lord God. Give us that heart, Lord. And Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed and walk. And that was verse eight, which is you know, completion. God is awesome. He hasn't forgot about you. He loves you and we need to be there for the little ones. That is our commission. That is our commission. Thank you for watching. Praise Jesus.